Welcome back into Talking Fitchburg and joining us via the phone from who knows where, it's Scott Gerard. How you doing there? Doing well. How about yourself? Oh, I'm living the dream. Preston and I are living the dream here. It's dreamlike. Mm -hmm. I'm in a I'm in a less exciting place than the Illinois Welcome Center this morning. I'm just at our office. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, that's too bad. It's not as welcoming as uh, <laughs> but, other places. Welcome home. Yeah, welcome home. Welcome back. Yeah. <laughs> All right, uh, Scott. Uh, you we uh, have you on the show to kind of give us an update on what happened at council, and it was kind of the. Uh, it's not the first council meeting per se, but the first formal council meeting. Would that be a good way to say it? Yeah, that's the, that's a good way to say it. They had met, but it was really the first time they met was just organizational stuff, figuring out who was going to serve on what committees and, and council president and things like that. So this was the first meeting where they really got to tackle some some resolutions. And we start off with uh, some parking restrictions uh, were talked about at the meeting. Yes, so uh, the council unanimously approved uh, a couple different parking restrictions and a speed limit change, uh, all with the same resolution. The most significant, I think, parking restriction that people will really notice is over on East Cheryl Parkway. It will be active uh, during Farmer's Market Thursdays from 2 p.m. to, I want to say, 7 p.m., um, and it will just be that area where the tent is over at Agora, just right there, uh, not too long of a stretch, but there will be no parking signs put up. And the real reason for that is with the construction on Lacey, East Cheryl is the main detour and, and is the directed detour. So it's just kind of a way to keep traffic flowing through there. Uh, wasn't really much of an argument from anyone. You know, uh, Alder Aaron Richardson and Dan Carpenter who are both the District 3 Alders explain that it's temporary and, and stressed that it's just a safety issue at this point. And uh, Dan Carpenter asked city staff to explore uh, putting up signs for directing farmer's market customers to the Agora parking, which is free and available. Uh, there's underground parking and some surface parking there. So city staff's going to look into that a little bit and is also uh, Patrick Marsh, the city administrator, suggested handing out flyers to uh, customers at the farmer's market those first couple weeks uh, to remind them. So something to watch for for farmer's market customers. And the other couple restrictions that were approved there, one is in the Williamsburg Way and Anton Drive area with the roundabout over there and a uh, new median. It just kind of creates not enough room for parking and making sure that people aren't in the way of traffic so there's going to be some restricted parking over there uh, that signs will go up and then the speed limit change on Nesbitt Road uh, the speed limit will drop five miles an hour uh, between Limestone Lane and McKee Road there's just a curve there that staff and the DOT after reconstructing it related to the Verona Road project felt was not safe for 35 miles an hour Sure, sure. Um, what did we uh, did we find out? Anything else at the meeting? Yeah, so there were a, a few other things. One was the tax increment finance district. Everyone's you know favorite juicy gossip, gossipy <laughs> talk. Uh, but a tax increment financing district was dissolved, uh, District Eight, which uh, covers the. Uh, area west of Syene Road to the rail line south of Rolfsmeyer Road. Uh, it just hadn't generated the revenue that was expected when it created, and uh, according to some city staff, there just wasn't really any projects that were likely to be eligible for TIF uh, coming up, and so it really was just costing administrative costs that weren't going to be repaid down the road. So they decided to dissolve that, pay for some of the losses with the money that came from the closure of Tax Increment Finance District 7 earlier this year. So uh, those districts balancing out a little bit. Perfect, Scott. Well, um, always interesting stuff. What Can you quickly tell me uh, what you got uh, working in the, the paper this upcoming month? Sure, sure. So we've got, you know, it's uh, always busy. You know, one of the things the Coleman race is coming here for the uh, race for the cure is coming to Fitchburg for the first time this year. Um, so we'll be having something on that. Uh, you know, last month the uh, Latino Chamber of Commerce moved into uh, Fitchburg, so that's a pretty big deal for, for the city and for that community. So we'll be looking into that. The dog park groundbreaking, um, uh, 
you know, and then just as always a calendar of upcoming events and, and schools coverage. Awesome. Well, uh, Scott, I appreciate you taking the time out this morning. I know it wasn't our normal time, so I appreciate that and, and the work you guys are doing over there. Uh, certainly check out uh, the website for more information. Uh, and Scott, you know, we never ask if people want to get in contact with you, got a story idea, what do they do? Uh, they can feel free to email me at community reporter at wcinet.com or they can go to our website connectfitchburg.com and uh, on the top there there's something called submit an item and you can submit a story idea and that'll come to me and my editor's email perfect well again scott thank you so much for your time and uh, have a great weekend we'll talk to you in uh, two weeks Sounds good. Thank you, guys. Have a great one. Thanks, Scott. All right, we'll take a quick uh, break here and wrap it up with a little PB&J right here on TF.